I am so thankful to be here tonight. You have no idea how thankful I am. Can you hear me, everybody? Can you hear me, everybody? Good evening. Distinguished guests, faculty, staff of Simmons College, good evening. Good evening. Dr. Cosby, the introduction. <laughs> Whatever I was going to say, I need to say something different because who does that? That kind of introduction just makes you feel like you got to do more. I just have to go, go a little further. Like you said, like Dr. Williams said, Jesus did, just go a little further. Do a little more. I am so thankful to be in a community that supports and loves me. I am so thankful to be here with you all tonight. This is really, really, really an honor for me. I cannot say enough. I can tell you that I give a lot of speeches, but I don't know that I have been more nervous than I have been in trying to prepare to speak to you today. For Dr. Cosby to ask me even to be the speaker um, is something I think is, is somewhat extraordinary. And I have been trying to figure out why God is choosing to bless me so much. My life really, I mean, it has been amazing. It has been interesting, the spaces that I've been invited to, where I get to speak and use my voice, and I, I just... I cannot say enough about what God is doing in my life and how he is using me. And for the last two days, all I could ever, just really, as I tried to write this speech over and over and over again for weeks, I haven't been able to put a word on paper. And for the last two days, I've just, that song, will you, will you still say yes? Would your heart and soul say yes? If I told you what I need of thee, Will your spirit still say yes? That is, that is all that has been in my spirit as I have attempted to prepare for this evening. Would you still say yes? I'm still trying to process my blessings. I know, I know, I know, graduates, that this is about you, but I am trying to process my blessings because you are part of my blessings. I cannot honor you more today than you have honored yourselves. I cannot honor your families today more than you have honored them by what you have accomplished. I cannot honor this community today more than you have honored this community by what you have accomplished. Whatever challenges you've had, whatever obstacles might have gotten in the way, you have overcome you have risen to the occasion, and you have made it. You have made it to this day. And in a matter, in a matter of moments, you will be graduates of Simmons. In a matter of moments. And I am, well, you know, when I thought about it, I wanted to, I thought about what would that be like? in HBCU, because I have to be honest with you all, when I was choosing a college, I didn't have all the information about historically black colleges and universities. I didn't understand how high the retention rate was compared to predominantly white universities. I didn't understand what happened at HBCUs. So my entire college career, from my psychology degree to law degree, all at predominantly white institutions. And so I didn't have that to pull from to write this speech. And so I kept thinking, why did he ask me? What do I say to them? I don't have this experience. And I prayed about it. And I had a memory that I haven't had, that I haven't thought about, that I haven't touched on in so many years. And you know what I remembered? I remember that when I was a little girl, my father never let me play with white dolls. He wouldn't let them in the house. He wouldn't allow them to be gifted to me. My father was adamant that every doll I touched would look like me. And as I thought about that, 
when I was a little girl, I really didn't understand why. Daddy, somebody is giving me a gift. I want to play with it. And now I imagine it was because he wanted me to have the opportunity to have him pour into me self-love before the world had a chance to tamper with my confidence. I imagine it was because my daddy wanted me to look in the mirror and see the beauty reflected back in my own black face, my own brown eyes, my own brown skin. I imagine that my daddy wanted me to build me up. He wanted to build me up, to reinforce my own sense of who I was and my own value. Perhaps he thought that if a doll maker didn't think enough of his little girl to make a doll that looked like me, then they couldn't have my daddy's money. Maybe, maybe my father wanted to prepare me for the stores that I would walk into to find hair care products for my hair relegated to a small corner of a back aisle. Maybe my daddy wanted to instill in me an unrelentless urge to love my people and to be able to reinforce that love even in the face of evidence constructed to demonize my skin. Maybe my daddy wanted me to remember to choose me and to choose us over all of the distractions that the world would offer. And as I consider what you must have experienced at Simmons. As I thought about what it must have been for you to walk through the hallways, to walk into class and have somebody be invested in what kind of black man, what kind of black woman you turned out to be. Maybe I thought about, maybe they were trying to do at Simmons what my daddy was trying to do for me. Maybe they were trying to pour into you to remind you that former slaves built this college. Maybe they wanted you to understand that there's no limit to what you can do. Maybe, maybe at Simmons College, you never heard the whisper that we don't want you. Maybe at Simmons you never heard that you were not good enough. Maybe at Simmons somebody loved you. Maybe what Mike said is true, what that sister said is true. Somebody prayed for you. Maybe, maybe Simmons did for you what my daddy did for me. I remember when Dr. Cosby was trying to reestablish Simmons to its fullness. I remember being in meetings at the mayor's office and people talking about why this was important. And they talked about the data and the numbers and how could a black school, how could an HBCU in our city change the city? But let me be clear. There is, there is a challenge to our struggle. There is a challenge to having black people really be free. There is a challenge to the existence of Simmons. So you have every obligation from today forward to do something for somebody besides you. Yes, we will celebrate you today. But tomorrow, tomorrow you got to help us free black people. We cannot be free as long as we need somebody else to help us pay for these educations. We cannot be free. This degree is not about you. I want black people to be free. I am tired. Aren't you tired? When I think about what you got at Simmons, when I think about what it must have been like when you fell down to have somebody that looked like you tell you you are good enough I know your struggle. Now get up. You have no right to stop now. I have never been to an HBCU to be educated, but I imagine, I just imagine that is what it must have been like for you. Maybe you, some of you, maybe have been counted out. Maybe somebody told you you couldn't. 
Maybe somebody said you weren't good enough. And then you showed up at Simmons. And somebody told you you were born enough. You are everything you ever needed to be. We've been waiting for you. We have been waiting for you. And when Dr. Cosby was trying to revitalize Simmons, and some of us didn't understand it. Some people thought he was a madman. He was so adamant. He was so adamant. He was not mad. He was angry. Because he understood. He understood the need for a Simmons. He understood. He had a vision. And check this out. He saw you. He saw what we couldn't see. He saw you. He saw you who would need to be poured into, to be reminded of your greatness, of your resilience, of your need, of your community's need for your success. This is so much bigger than you. This is so much bigger than Louisville. This is even bigger than Dr. Cosby. This is you saying to God, yes, yes, I will. There are people waiting for you. There is a whole future that needs you. And we can never be free without you. Maybe, 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 maybe that's what my daddy was trying to do for me. He wanted me first to love me before the world told me that I was unlovable before some man in a room told me to be quiet. That has happened to me twice now. In the last two months, I have been talking, and some very powerful man has asked me to be quiet. But it's something about those dolls. <laughs> it's something about those dolls that I know for as long as I have breath in my body. I will fight for us. And I guess there's probably something about Simmons and HBCUs that allow us to find these safe spaces to be ourselves, to find our voices, to come to our own conclusions, to understand our history. At Simmons, you've had educators and administrators invested in you. No quiet whispers. I think there's something special about that, especially now when we are in a country with so much turmoil. When you think about the idea that South Carolina couldn't imagine taking down a Confederate flag until nine black people were killed in a church on a Sunday, or not a Sunday, I'm sorry, because if it was Sunday, they'd have just been regular black Christians, so we had to have a different day even to get a flag taken down. Something is wrong in America. And maybe you, maybe you Simmons graduates can help change it. I am holding out hope for our future. I am now completely buying into this vision that Dr. Cosby and this board and these board of trustees has had over these years. I see you. I see your futures. I see what you are going to do. I see you contributing to saving this world. Please let me be clear. I am so proud of you today. I am so thankful to God that he saw fit to put me here before you today. But let me assure you, whatever degrees we have, whatever praise we might receive today or in the future, it is not about you, it is not about me. It is about what we can do to set our people free. That is what it is about. That is what it has always been about. And every time you get discouraged, whenever you feel low, and you will, there will be days when you don't feel like going on. Trust me, I know. I have had them. I still have them. And when you do, remember this. Dr. Simmons, this school's namesake, was a former slave. That's the kind of stock you come from. That's the kind of stock you come from. You don't have the right to fail. You don't have the right to stop. So when you feel like giving up, 
when the world is on your shoulders, when all you can do is get on your knees, then bow down and get on your knees, but get up in the power knowing that all you are really doing is saying yes to God. Yes, I will. Where you lead me, 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 God, I will go and I will do your will and I will do my best. That is all, that is all anybody can ever ask of you. Just go where he leads you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Congratulations. Thank you.